In the last hour, India's Air Accident Investigation Bureau has released its preliminary report. It started like any other investigation, but within hours, India's Air Accident Investigation Bureau dropped a revelation that left the entire aviation world stunned. On June 13th, among the shattered rooftops near the crash site, investigators found one of the jet's black boxes damaged, but surprisingly intact. Just two days later, the second black box turned up buried deep in the debris. Both were urgently flown to Delhi by the Indian Air Force, setting off a wave of speculation and anxiety that swept through airlines, regulators, and passengers alike. But as the AIB's analysts began to crack open the flight data, the early clues pointed somewhere no one expected. The initial findings didn't suggest a mechanical failure, a system glitch, or even a freak weather event. Instead, the data was hinting at something far more bewildering, an event so rare that it sent investigators scrambling for answers and left the public asking, what could possibly cause a state-of-the-art Dreamliner to lose power right after takeoff? And just as the world started to tune in, the first pieces of the real story began to emerge, but that wasn't the whole story. As investigators dug deeper, the details only grew stranger. The flight data revealed a move that seemed almost impossible. Just seconds after takeoff, both fuel control switches, one for each engine, had been flipped to the cutoff position. In simple terms, the engines weren't starved of fuel by accident or by nature. They were shut off by command. This wasn't a case of a single faulty component or a subtle systems glitch. Every check showed the engines, hydraulics, and flight controls were working perfectly in those crucial first moments. But when the switches went to cut off, it was like turning off your car engine as you speed down the highway instant loss of power. No warning. The aircraft's ram air turbine, a device that only deploys during the most catastrophic failures, popped out just four to five seconds after liftoff, a clear sign that both engines had lost thrust almost instantly. It was the kind of scenario pilots train for, but almost never face. Total engine loss, with no time to react and no obvious reason why it happened. Nothing about this lined up with known procedures or common mistakes. The evidence suggested something far more troubling, either an unimaginable error or a chain of events that defied all conventional logic. And what investigators discovered next would only deepen the mystery. If there's one thing every pilot knows, it's that fuel switches on a Boeing 787 aren't there for casual use. These aren't simple toggles you might brush by mistake. They're rugged, heavy-duty levers that demand a three-step action, lift, pull, and hold. This design is intentional, making accidental activation virtually impossible, especially with both switches at the same time. In decades of commercial aviation, there's never been a documented case where both fuel switches have moved to cut off on their own. Pilots are drilled relentlessly. The switches go to run before takeoff, and they stay there until the jet is safely at the gate after landing. In fact, the only time those levers should move during a flight is for a very specific engine restart procedure at cruising altitude, and even then, it's a tightly choreographed, double-checked move. But in this case, the switches were flipped within a single second of each other right after leaving the ground. That's not just unusual, it borders on the impossible. The idea that both pilots would, by accident or panic, move both switches to cut off at such a critical moment simply doesn't fit with any known training, checklist, or emergency protocol. Experts in the field, from seasoned captains to crash investigators, all agreed. Whatever happened in that cockpit, it wasn't something anyone had ever prepared for. Yet, as the investigation unfolded, even more disturbing questions began to surface. Naturally, the first question everyone asked was, could this really be a case of pilot error? Is there any scenario where a trained crew would deliberately shut down both engines at such a low altitude? Surprisingly, there's only one during a dual engine failure at cruising altitude, where the checklist briefly calls for both fuel switches to be moved to cut off, then quickly back to run in a last-ditch effort to restart the engines. But this procedure never happens just seconds after takeoff. It's never done at low altitude, and it's never left in the cutoff position. Yet the flight data showed a chilling sequence. Both switches flipped to cutoff just one second apart, far too fast for two careful independent actions, and still registered as individual moves. For experienced aviators, this timeline just didn't add up. Then came the cockpit voice recorder, a single tense exchange in the final seconds before disaster. One pilot, Clearly shocked, asks, why did you switch it to off? The other responds, I didn't switch it to off. 
In those words, investigators found the heart of the mystery. If neither pilot believed they'd made the move, what if anything could have forced those switches to cut off? It was a question that pointed well beyond human error and straight towards something hidden deep inside the jet itself. And as analysts looked closer, a troubling possibility began to take shape. If there's one thing every pilot knows, it's that fuel switches on a Boeing 787 aren't there for casual use. These aren't simple toggles you might brush by mistake. They're rugged, heavy-duty levers that demand a three-step action, lift, pull, and hold. This design is intentional, making accidental activation virtually impossible, especially with both switches at the same time. In decades of commercial aviation, there's never been a documented case where both fuel switches have moved to cut off on their own. Pilots are drilled relentlessly. The switches go to run before takeoff, and they stay there until the jet is safely at the gate after landing. In fact, the only time those levers should move during a flight is for a very specific engine restart procedure at cruising altitude, and even then, it's a tightly choreographed, double-checked move. But in this case, the switches were flipped within a single second of each other right after leaving the ground. That's not just unusual, it borders on the impossible. The idea that both pilots would, by accident or panic, move both switches to cut off at such a critical moment simply doesn't fit with any known training, checklist, or emergency protocol. Experts in the field, from seasoned captains to crash investigators, all agreed. Whatever happened in that cockpit, it wasn't something anyone had ever prepared for. Yet, as the investigation unfolded, even more disturbing questions began to surface. For many, the idea of a mysterious systems failure wasn't just a technical issue. It was a symptom of something much bigger at Boeing. The company's recent history is littered with scandals and shortcuts, each one eroding confidence in their once unshakable reputation. Just a few years ago, the world watched in disbelief as the 737 MAX disaster unfolded, exposing how software problems and cost-cutting had led to tragedy. But the Dreamliner program hasn't been immune to similar warnings. In April 2024, a whistleblower stepped forward, accusing Boeing of rushing production and skipping vital safety steps on the 787. He claimed that critical components had been improperly fastened, creating hidden risks that could threaten the plane's structural integrity over time. This wasn't a lone voice Boeing itself had already admitted to gaps and defects in hundreds of Dreamliner fuselages, forcing costly inspections and delivery delays. Then in early 2023, yet another setback. Dreamliner deliveries halted again, this time over documentation lapses and questions about structural joints. The pattern was impossible to ignore. Quality issues, software inconsistencies, even wiring defects. Problems seemed to surface again and again, often kept quiet until outside pressure forced Boeing to respond. With each new revelation, trust in Boeing's oversight faded a little more. For investigators, the focus was shifting. If a failure could happen with the fuel control system, if even the most basic safety barriers could be compromised, what else might be lurking? Unseen in the Dreamliner's maze of digital automation. And with the stakes so high, regulators knew they had to dig even deeper. With the world watching and pressure mounting, investigators turned their attention to the Dreamliner Dreamliner's deepest secrets. Teams from the FAA, NTSB, and Boeing's own engineering ranks began tearing into the jet's architecture, examining every line of code, every wire, and every logic path connecting the cockpit controls to the engines. Their mission, to find out if a hidden flaw could allow a manual command to be misread or overridden by the aircraft's software. At the heart of the probe was the electronic engine control system, the EEC, the digital gateway between the pilot's hands and the jet's powerful turbines. If something is vital as a fuel switch could be misinterpreted in flight, the implications would go far beyond a single crash. Experts questioned whether modern aircraft, now more reliant on automation than ever, had become too complex to fully trust. Could a single corrupted signal, a rogue software update, or a hidden wiring defect quietly trigger disaster without any warning? As they dug deeper, the possibility of a fundamental design flaw couldn't be ruled out. Regulators and engineers focused on the exact pathways that turn a physical switch move movement into a digital command? Was there a chance, however remote, that a conflict or anomaly in those systems could send a false cutoff signal even if the pilots did everything right? At this stage, answers were still in short supply. Boeing, for its part, remained tight-lipped, promising full cooperation but stopping short of admitting any system-level failure. With the full investigation projected to take years, one thing was certain. Every aspect of the Dreamliner's digital nervous system was now under the microscope. 
and as the search for answers continued, bigger questions about the future of aviation began to emerge. As the investigation dragged on, the world's attention shifted from the technical details to the bigger, more unsettling questions. Was this crash a rare, freak occurrence, or was it a warning sign, evidence of a deeper problem within Boeing, and maybe even the entire aviation industry? The Dreamliner was designed to be one of the safest, most advanced planes in the sky, but now its reputation was shadowed by doubts about automation, oversight, and the unseen risks of ever more complex technology. A growing chorus of critics began to ask, have we made flying too complicated for even the best pilots to control? Has the drive for efficiency and cost cutting put innovation ahead of safety? And if a single untraceable software glitch could bring down a state-of-the-art jet, how many other hidden threats might be waiting to surface? Speculation and rumors swirled in the media. Some insiders suggested this was only the tip of the iceberg a symptom of systemic issues at Boeing, where corporate pressures and regulatory gaps have left cracks in the foundation. Others argued that the Dreamliner's troubles were unique, a tragic fluke unlikely to repeat. But one thing was clear. Until investigators could answer exactly how and why those fuel switches moved to cut off, every Dreamliner flight would carry a little more uncertainty. So as the world waits for answers, one question remains, how safe is too safe? And who do we trust with our lives at 35,000 feet? No matter how advanced our technology gets, every accident like this reminds us how much still lies beneath the surface hidden in lines of code, buried in company culture, or overlooked in the rush to innovate. The Dreamliner crash has opened a door to tough questions about automation, accountability, and just how much trust we can put in the systems meant to keep us safe. Right now, investigators are still piecing together what happened in those critical seconds after takeoff. Was it a rare, once-in-a-lifetime failure, or the first and sign of a deeper issue that could affect the entire industry? Only time and a full, transparent investigation will tell. But what do you think? Was this a tragic fluke, a design flaw, or part of a bigger story at Boeing? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you want to stay up to date as the investigation unfolds, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss the next chapter. Until then, stay curious, stay safe, and thanks for watching.